Listen, get Amir and his colonizer girlfriend out of here. You know, I used to ride for Amir. I used to go up for Amir. I did. But he could go. He could go. This, so, number one, this episode was all over the place. So, I'm going to be jumping around as much as possible to talk about all the important parts. So, if I miss any of the intricate details, get down in the comments and tell me what you think or what I missed, etc. But, girl, so this review is going to be all over the place is basically what I'm saying to you. So, we are here. This is season two, episode eight of Summer House Martha's Vineyard, one of the best shows on Bravo. This episode is entitled Gossip Girl. And I I don't I, I don't know how to feel, right? I feel a way. And we're gonna get into that way that I feel. And if y'all feel a way, get down in the comments. Sound off. Don't forget to like this video before you leave. My name is Belle. I forgot to do all of those things because I feel a way. Let's get into this way, okay? Anyway, so. We're coming off the heels of Bria having a temper tantrum, carrying on with Simon. Simon came downstairs during the party with his flamingo suit on. Now, baby, we all know how Europeans get down. Europeans go European. Who cares? Okay? That's what they do, all right? He was just doing some white boy shit at a party. It really don't matter, Bria. It, did, it does not matter to me, okay? Bria feels disrespected. He doesn't listen. And it's very hard for me to take what Bria says for real because she blows up at every little thing. She makes everything a thing, especially if it doesn't go her way. And so when I'm in the, when I'm considering that, it's very hard for me to try to consider her feelings, okay? So I understand Simon's frustration, but I am very aware that while Bria may be you know, unreasonable, bratty, selfish, annoying, all of those things. I do understand as she talks to Simon about the racism that she dealt with or is dealing with, with his family members and just being in Germany, full stop. I'm going to have to lean towards more what Bria is saying. I'm going to have to try to like suss through, you know, you know what I mean? Some of her bullshit and really try to start listening trying to hear what she has to say. So anyway, um, they're carrying on and just everybody is just doing all kinds of things. There was conversation with stinking ass Natalie, stinking ass Amir laying all in the bed, being disgusting. I don't know about y'all, but had I got my, got in the bed without taking a bath with my outside clothes on and make it even worse, just so bra in panties, the way my grandma would have snatched me up, girl snatched me, girl snatched. Okay. I would have gotten snatched. But anyway, and not in the good way. <laughs> and not in the good way. I would have gotten snatched. And they both arguing about who need to take a shower. I think that was in the morning. That was so nasty. That was so nasty. Why the hell everything going off as soon as I start recording? Shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. Anyway, every bell want to go off. Anyway, so... Noelle picked her wedgie. Girl, the way she reached all the way up, gave herself a damn enema. Girl, what is going on, girl? <laughs> girl, she washed her hands. Noelle's hands went all the way up there. I was like, girl, uh-uh, girl. No, you should have did that in the bathroom. Because there's cameras everywhere. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, Summer and Jasmine are talking. A, a friend comes in there with blonde hair. I did not catch the friend's name, but they're talking. Summer is telling Jasmine about how she's basically having a dry evening. She hasn't drank anything. She hasn't had any drink or anything like that. Jasmine is saying, welcome to my side. Y'all know Jasmine's pregnant. She can't drink anything right now. And they're just talking about how life is crazy and how, you know, things, one minute is fine. Another minute is crazy. We know her grandmother, Summer's grandmother is going to go into surgery and just trying to like deal with her mental health and all those things. So, so shout out to Tammy Talks, who is a friend of friend and supporter and subscriber of the channel. And I am a friend and supporter and subscriber of her channel as well. She also reviews this show. Shout out to Tammy Talks, y'all. Let's get her to 30,000, y'all. Um, 30,000 subscribers. Anyway, she and I were having a conversation and we were talking about how Summer's prototype or her her uh her character narrative is basically being spun right so jordan and summer to me in my opinion and i know some of these things tammy is gonna disagree with but me 
to me, Summer and Jordan are literally the same person. But the way that the story arc is developing between Jordan and Summer, it's looking like Summer is having almost kind of like one of those villain to hero arcs. You know what I mean? Like we're taking this villainous story, but giving her depth and meaning and all this other stuff. But then Jordan, no matter what she does, just turns and is, is painted as the villain. Now, do I think that Summer and Jordan are literally two sides of the same coin? Absolutely. Do I think both them heifers are fucked up in the head and mean and nasty and rude and don't need to be nowhere around nobody? Absolutely. But I do not like how Summer is being painted as, you know, this wayward, tortured soul who's just going through things. Although we've seen her cut the monkey, okay, at every turn. I have not seen Jordan put her hands on anybody. Now, has Jordan show her ass? Yes, usually, because that's what she do. But she has never gone to the extent of putting her hands on anyone. So I'm noticing that 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 little that little uh, piece there, and I'm not feeling it. So anyway, shout out to Tammy Talks. So we see Amir and Bria. When I tell you this scene was bullshit, get this get this bullshit out my face. I don't want to see nothing that Amir got this. And the reason why, and I don't know for some of those who don't know, because I was not in the loop. Y'all, when the show go off, child, I turn my TV off and I go by my way, girl. I do not be digging down no t- timelines and going on Twitter and digging up shit. Girl, I do not be having time, girl. I be trying to be outside, girl. I be trying to go to brunch. A bitch be trying to get drunk, girl. Trying to have a good ass time, okay? So I don't be going nowhere trying to dig into no deeper dive and no shit like that with other people i don't do that i don't especially no niggas i don't know but i did come across the old tweets that amir had posted i think it was in 2023 or i don't know maybe 10 or 11 years ago but i don't care how long ago it was racism sweetie okay that anti-blackness i'm always going to side eye that i don't care how old you are girl he posted some foolish just talking about you know, black women scare him and all this other stuff will make sense as to why he was responding to Mariah in the way that he did, which makes sense as, as to why he made the comment about these girls wear so many wigs. I can't tell like Amir, you and your raggedy ass girlfriend can get the fuck on. Okay. Y'all can beat y'all feet somewhere else. Okay. Girl, carry on. Okay. Carry the fuck on. So Amir and Bria, sorry, I had to take that quick moment to cuss his ass out real quick. I'm probably going to do it a few more times, but I really had to take a pause to the cause and cuss his raggedy tied donkey booty ass out because I'm sick of him and his little raggedy twig face girlfriend, pale face. I do not like her. Okay. So anyway, Amir and Bria having a conversation. Amir called himself a marriage counselor or a relationship counselor. I guess that's what he called himself. Let me tell you something, Amir. You need to mind your goddamn business. You need to go sit your ass down and you need to be trying to figure out what the hell you got going on with your own goddamn life. That's what the fuck you need to be doing. But hey, we're moving on because that scene was so annoying. Girl, I got up, went to go grab me something to drink. Girl, I went, went upstairs. Girl, I, I was doing everything but watching that scene. I do not care. If y'all want to talk about it, get in the comments, girl, because I will not waste my time no more. We moving the fuck on, all right? So... We see Noelle, Bria, Natalie, and Shanice outside the next day. Girls, whew. This, this is what, this is what, and I cannot put my finger on what it is, but y'all, y'all know we all see something that's not right, but y'all can't put your finger on it. You don't know how, you don't have the language to express exactly what it is, but you see it and you like, nah, that's some bullshit. That's exactly what it was. Y'all notice how Natalie's voice her accent changed, right? The way she started talking to them, she was like, girl, he over here doing this and that. I said, uh-uh, uh-uh. The black scent, is that what it's called? Uh Uh-uh, girl, you got to go. No, no, because I know she was with her, with her friends, her friends from Miami, and girl, being from Miami, tell me everything I need to know about her. She might be Cuban, and if I know she Cuban, girl, she get that, Miami, girl, they give me everything I need to know about her ass. But anyway, we quiet as a scale. We can blame their asses for letting Trump in in, in the office in the first place. But anyway, we moving forward. So Noel and Bria and Shanice are actually having a whole conversation and they decide to have this conversation in front of Natalie. Why the fuck y'all decided to do that bullshit? I don't know why Bria felt like Natalie was a safe space. I don't, I be want to punch girl i'm gonna punch her ass in the face anyway so bria talks about how the whole flamingo situation you know she feels like she's not gonna be bringing simon back to the house next summer girl at the end of this episode they end up making up i was just looking at bria like girl how long y'all gonna how long y'all gonna carry this out because i'm tired truth is i'm tired bitch i'm tired move the fuck on girl because you're not really gonna let him go because he's he affords you so many different things simon is your sugar daddy okay and and that's it that's all so we're not finna sit up here and keep playing five all right so the other thing that i really wanted to point out 
and other people have said this too and i and I've, I've said it and i'm like eh, i ain't gonna say nothing but girl i gotta say something today girl this leave out girl why the fuck y'all not wearing braids did y'all feel like wearing braids was too ethnic or something i don't know but i have never met a black woman who was going on vacation during the summertime who did not make a hair appointment to get her braids done okay before she went on vacation ma'am all of this leave out girl Bria gotta wear a damn headband to cover that shit up girl you should have wore braids Noel, all that leave out girl what the fuck jasmine girl what in the hell is going on girl that shit is a mess it looks a hot mess okay i, I don't understand why y'all weren't wearing braids that i, I don't understand so they're all going biking. The majority of the people, ultimately Nick and Tasia decided that they're not going biking because Tasia didn't have any biking clothes. Um, I felt like she could have biked in that cute. Actually, no, that was a dress. I thought it was pants. No, she can't bike in that. So never mind. Anyway. So Natalie's hearing all the information. So Bria was like, you know, Nick is very handsy. He's very flirty. I don't even know how Tasia would even deal with that. Noelle was like, I don't even know how Tasia, you know, I wonder how Tasia feels that knowing maybe three days ago, her boyfriend, maybe less than three hours ago, her boyfriend was all flirty, flirty with somebody else and carrying on. Now, do I think that they have a point? Absolutely. Nick ain't shit to me. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. I know everybody has been like looking at Nick, you know, like, okay, Nick, what's up? But Nick is still that same Nick who slid in everybody's DM, including Bria's last season. Okay. And didn't tell nobody his ass had a girlfriend until everybody turned him down. So with that being said, Nick is that same nigga. All right. So I haven't, I still got my good eye on Nick. However, comma, shout out to Nita the Diva. Okay. We still, y'all, you, this conversation did not need to be had in front of Natalie ass. So Natalie is over here like, well, we need to sit up and t- we need to tell Tasia if y'all feel like, bitch, what nobody saying nothing about telling Tasia a goddamn thing, bitch. Did nobody say nothing. This our conversation and your ass is over here volunteering to go run and tell some business that your ass ain't even a part of. You- it's for black people anyway. Immediately, it's like, uh-uh, stop. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Did nobody say nothing about no telling no Tasia nothing, girl. And if you feel like you need to go back and tell our business after this conversation, girl, we don't need to tell you nothing else and i'm not i'm i'm confusion okay i'm confusion as to why in the hell they didn't catch natalie in the moment girl ain't no more you, you don't need to tell her nothing because this conversation stays right here girl uh uh-uh, y'all should have talked to her ass right then and there okay so natalie is taking it upon herself saying you know maybe i need to you know tasia was in the bed waiting for nick and nick was running around you know looking like he was trying to get into something else i said oh no girl mm-mm yeah, y'all don't need to tell Natalie another thing else, okay? Another, not another thing else, all right? So, again, Natalie decides she brings it, she wants to bring it up. They talk about popping the question. I think they're all getting ready to go bike riding. Again, Amir and, Nat- and Tasia aren't going. Tasia has this really pretty red dress on. They're going to go to brunch first, and then they'll have the crew meet with them after bike riding. There was a lot of different scenes uh jasmine and jordan are riding their bike together jordan is struggling just a little bit jasmine is encouraging her jordan in a confessional saying you know this is the jasmine that i remembered um honestly y'all i ain't gonna hold you again me and tim we were having a conversation and high, like high key jasmine left jordan out to dry basically left her out to dry she left mariah out to dry she left jordan out to dry she really did now is jordan a raggedy ass heifer she absolutely is but i do feel like jasmine really and truly was not a good friend to the people who she quote unquote called her friends okay so um they asked Nick about marriage because he says maybe you should create a, uh, a Verizon family plan to Tasia about the phone. I think she's having issues with her phone service. I'm not exactly sure. He said, do an Arrington family plan. And she was like, my name is not Arrington. Okay. So then the conversation of marriage comes up. And in my mind, in my mind, Nick would be a really great husband. He would be a really great husband when he is ready is nick ready right now absolutely the fuck not nick is not ready at all and you can tell because he starts rambling about marriage and all this other stuff just, boy just say it you are not ready you're not ready okay again there's just so much going on they're getting into the car recapping about simon take putting on that flamingo suit farting carrying on just being embarrassing because they see simon outside just circling around in the yard just looking pitiful and sad because him and Bria are still at odds but again at the end of this episode they get back together so it really doesn't matter that's why i'm giving Bria the time of day like that because she played too much she wants to pull the fire alarm 
at every at every go, girl. I I can't with you, like girl. She's like the boy who cried wolf every time. Anyway, so Shanice sees Nick and Tasia, and she says that they're weird. I thought that that was very weird of her to say. That was very weird of Shanice to say that Nick and Tasia are weird. No, Shanice, you are weird, okay? But anyway, Simon and Bria are on the rooftop. They're having a conversation. Now, I was trying to Google it to find out exactly what a Watchmen party is. I don't know if it's the Watchmen, the show, or if it was Watchmen. What was that? I Googled Watchmen in Germany, girl. I don't know what that was. But anyway, and I don't even know if they said Watchmen. But Bria, so Simon uses that as an example as to why. Oh, actually, let me back up. Simon actually uses that as an example to illustrate to Bria that she cuts up and acts the monkey when he invites her to things that he is throwing or that he has been invited to. Now, Bria gives us a little bit of insight on how Simon's family thinks. She said, you put me in a dangerous situation and you didn't even see that it was dangerous. And at first I was like, here she go crying wolf again. But then she brought in the whole element of racism and she said that his family members have said certain things, put their hands on her. One girl said to her that, oh, I didn't know Simon was into indigenous women like that. So apparently Simon has racist family members and Bria was like, you did not protect me. You didn't see it. You know, you didn't say anything to your cousins when they were being disrespectful to me you're blind to racism and see that's the problem for me with dating a white man although praise god my boo is black okay but dating a white man i don't have time for no white man that is not constantly on the ready deconstructing racism girl i need me Okay, what do you call, what do they call Sean King? I need to talk him X, girl. I cannot be fooled with no white man that is not actively deconstructing racism in his own way. Whether it be a podcast, whether it be a newspaper, whether it be some sort of Twitter platform, like whatever platform that the white man, if I ever, ever dated one or was with one or anything like that, because you never know what's going to happen in your life. I need him to be readily constantly all the time deconstructing racism if he not doing that then he not for me okay and that's on p y'all anyway so and that's and that's just my opinion you date whoever you want you don't have to have any requirements for whoever you date but part of me okay i need him to be actively deconstructing racism on a regular basis and i need him to have a platform that does that as well so anyway we get to see the bicycling i think i said that already they it, it was cute it was fun i really want to go bicycling again the weather the sun is finally coming out consistently and I want to be outside too. I was out. Well, I was outside this weekend, but I want to be outside on my bicycle too, child. Anyway, so we see brunch. Brunch is happening. Everybody's sitting at the table. They look wore out basically from riding those bicycles. And Natalie wants to pull Tasia aside. And the way that Tasia handled this. Now that's how you clear a bitch. I loved it. I said, I know that's motherfucking right. I know that's much. Sometimes, sometimes when the mess comes to your door, you have to just look over it. Like, huh? Because the person who's trying to bring the mess to your door, when you do not entertain them, girl, it'll make them feel real crunchy. Do you know what I mean? It's like they expecting you to enter in, in, partake in the mess that they bringing you. And when you don't do it, then they like, oh my God, they're going to think I'm messy. Yeah, bitch, you being messy right now. And then nobody wants you to do that. So I'm going to leave you right here in your mess. I said, I know that's motherfucking right, Natalie. I mean, I know that's motherfucking right, Tasia. Not Natalie, fuck that bitch. Anyway, okay, so here go, Natalie. I need to talk to you in a messy way. Because if this is supposed to be your friend, then you would have already called your friend and told her. You would have already, you would have been done, okay? You would have been unchecked your friend. You would have been uncalled your girl. They were like, girl, let me tell you something, girl. And and this would have been prior to the conversations that you were having with Bria, Shanice, and Noel. See, no, Natalie, you wanted to be messy. You wanted to take it upon yourself and try to stir up the pot because you call yourself trying to be on TV via black folks, the black folks that you don't even like. Girl, get her out of here. I'm sick of her. Then she had the nerve to be pulling in that girl hair, had a hand in that girl hair. I was like, get your hands on her goddamn head. <laughs> I ain't going to hold you though. Nick looked real shook. He looked real shook. So she was like, you know, I want to just pull you aside and tell you some things before it actually, before it gets to you. I was like, girl, what you talking about? 
What are you talking about? Again, not your place, not your business. Quote unquote, if this your friend, if this your friend, why are you not pulling her aside by herself? Like talking to her one on one. Why did you have to make a spectacle of it? I oh child, I said I know that's right. Tasia, Tasia was like, mm mm. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm leaving. So no thanks. Thank you though. I appreciate it. Go sit your little scrawny ass back down. Bye. When I tell you Natalie was feeling so crunchy, I said, I know that's motherfucking right. That's how, now that's how you clear a bitch. I know that's right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Anyway, so uh, Nick and Tasia and Donald, cause Donald gotta go. Okay. Shout out to everybody. I have fun. I know that's right. We love Donald. Um, so they all get ready to go because they have to catch their flight. Um, they're not, when is uh, Natalie catching her damn flight? When is she leaving? Let that be, when is she going? Oh my God. And also side note, shout out to the Brooke Ashley. She said on Twitter that uh, Amir said that he wasn't going to return back to the show unless Natalie came back with him. Girl, both of y'all can pack y'all raggedy double bags and go. I said, oh, uh uh-uh, baby, not you in here trying to colonize a black TV show. So Natalie is texting Nick trying to do some damage control because she messy as fuck. And Amir's on the side trying to coach Natalie what to say. Yeah, you weren't trying to do anything wrong. You were just trying to look out for your girl. You were just trying to look out for your girl. Oh my God. Yeah, these blacks. Like, get the fuck out of here, Amir. I'm sick of him. And you know, Natalie didn't have any malicious intent because that's her girl, right? Okay. And as Natalie is trying to do some cleanup, Cause she messy and Tasia let her face crack right like like it should. They're at the table. The rest of the crew is at the table talking about relationships. And I think it was Noel who asked Alex, you know, did you wish that you had could have brought somebody on the on the couples thing? And he said, Yeah, I wish I could, girl. When I tell you Summer's face, baby, the side eye, the bombastic side eye the bombastic side eye girl he she who if looks could kill all right i said hell no anyway i think jasmine brings up how she doesn't really know tasia like that like that and would like an opportunity to meet her and know her but didn't want to grill her in that moment okay while i do think that them trying to make a thing out of Nick by saying he's handsy and all this other stuff that's inappropriate that's wrong on every level I do understand that Nick I see who Nick is I see him for his works but that does not mean that these girls need to be trying to go back and say anything because honestly I believe Tasia know who Nick is too okay anyway meanwhile back at the house Nick and Preston get back home before everyone else does because they were trying to ensure that their loved ones get to the to the airport right and again I don't understand why Donald and Tasia had to go before Natalie does I'm not feeling this I'm not feeling this direction that we're going in I do not want I, I don't want it I do not want it okay I understand that in order to get ratings or whatever you have to integrate certain things, but I don't feel like you do. I feel like this cast is wonderful. And I don't think that Natalie needs to be a part of this cast. She can carry herself on somewhere. She can go on to original summer house. Okay. This is not the place for her and the fans don't like her. Me. I am the fans. Okay. Anyway. So Nick is telling Preston about the whole handsy situation because in the text messages, Natalie is trying to save face. She's saying, this is what I was going to tell Tasia because this is what Noelle, Bria, and Shanice were talking about, and I felt like she should know about it. Girl, boxer. Boxer right there, okay? Square up, catch me outside, okay? So Nick is very annoyed and upset, as he should be. He was like, I thought we already handled this. I talked to Jasmine and Summer about this already. I don't understand why this is a thing still, right? And I'm with Nick, I am with Nick. That does not make sense. And then Preston was like, how in the hell did Natalie get in it? You absolutely right, my brother. That's why I love Preston. How the hell did Natalie get into this shit? And Preston was like, I'm frustrated because people always take one thing and then they go tell somebody else. You're telling a thousand people except for the person that you actually know. And my thing is, Natalie is an interloper. We don't even know this girl. Y'all don't even know her, okay? The original cast 
we don't know nothing about no goddamn Natalie. Y'all ain't never bring that bitch up, okay? We don't know that hoe. We don't know her. I don't know her, okay? And so I don't know how y'all felt like it was so comfortable, how, how y'all got so comfortable with bringing this interloper into the conversation when y'all don't even know her like that, like that, like that. And they don't even like her. And she don't even like them. Did y'all forget that? Anyway, so everybody gets gets home nick is clearly pissed noel he's like y'all are talking about i'm handsy wanted to bring tasia into the conversation y'all are literally trying to ba basically ruin my reputation noel was like i didn't even say anything he was like i don't even know what your problem is and i know you want to be included in everything and i said what Whoop. baby noel i'm telling you that people please and spirit girl to get your ass in trouble every goddamn time girl you need to sit your ass down and mind your goddamn business okay but Nick put her, she was like, I didn't even say that. I just said, does he do things? Yes. But am I feeling, do I feel like he made me feel uncomfortable? No, not at all. I said, girl, that's why you should have never brought that up. And you damn should have never should have said anything in front of Natalie. She was like, I don't even know why. Maybe we shouldn't have never said nothing in front of Natalie. Maybe you think. Okay. And then she says, well, Nick it in the confessional. Well, Nick, if you didn't have no problem and if everything was all right, then maybe why are you getting so upset? I'm like, Ooh, Natalie. I mean, Natalie, ooh, ne Noel, ooh, girl, <laughs> ooh, girl, now, uh-uh, now it's not the time. Now it's not the time, love. Now it's not the time to be doing that. Mm -mm. This is not that. And I get it. Again, Nick is Nick, okay? But this is not that, all right? So Shanice gets there because Noel was like, let me hear go grab Shanice and Bria because I'm not about to burn down by myself. I'm not to burn. I'm not about to take all these L's by myself. So she goes and gets and, Nick and Bria. I mean, so she goes and gets Shanice and Bria. And... Shanice was like backed into a corner. You know how she get chat. She was like, yeah, I mean, I feel like, no, you didn't touch me, but I just, I mean, like you have like wandering eyes and then they show a flashback of Shanice getting butt naked every five minutes. Shanice, if you naked every five minutes, I'm going to be looking. And I don't even like women. Girl, I don't find nothing about women attractive. Like I know when somebody's cute, right? But I'm not like, oh yeah, I, I don't find nothing about women attractive. But if you bucket naked, okay, I'm going to look like, girl, what the hell? That Anybody will do it. Matter of fact, I feel like you do it on purpose so that you can get attention, okay? And then wasn't it you last week or the week before where you was hollering about, oh, I'm fucking Nick tonight. I'm effing Nick tonight. Wasn't that you? Girl, he didn't say any of those things, girl. That was all on you. So what are you talking about, Shanice, girl? I, s <laughs> I said, these girls really be having this double standard and I hate this for us. I really hate this for us. And then here go Bria. Bria was like, you know, I, I didn't say anything. I never talked about you. Bria, you was a goddamn lie. And, and this is the shit that I'm talking about with Bria. This is why I go back to the point where I said, Do, I don't want to give heat to Amir. Yes, Amir is aggravating. Yes, Amir is fake. And baby, he got so many more issues and anti-black as hell. But the person who started that whole issue with the dog clothes was Bria. Anytime Bria, anytime anybody approached Bria about any motherfucking thing, her ass replied back to them with a raggedy attitude. And it's so horrible because I'm coming to you with my issue with you. Oh, and I'm standing 10 toes down, not being rude, not being disrespectful. I'm really just trying to tell you how I feel about it. And and Bria has this way of dismissing how you feel. That girl was like, let it out. Is this how you feel? Go ahead, let it out. It's fine. Let it out. Fine. You're not gonna talk lower, you're not gonna talk to me like that. Well, girl. You the one brought it there. You took it there. It literally didn't even have to be that until you took it there. And then you antagonized the situation. She did it. The way she handled Nick in this episode is exactly how she handled Mariah. And everybody stood up for, for Bria, right? And getting all on Amir. And don't get me wrong. Amir ain't shit. He can go sit his ass down. Take him somewhere. Go here. You go somewhere else, girl. Okay? But Bria is her own problem. She is her own worst enemy. And it is so annoying that nobody calls her out nobody puts her in her place the only person who is even halfway gone toe to toe with her is Preston everybody else just let her do whatever the hell she want to do the way I would have been cussing that bitch out every time I get an opportunity girl Bria we be gotten cussed out girl you get cussed out every time I see you girl it's on sight not no hands or nothing because you ain't gotta put your hands on nobody but I'm definitely gonna be cussing your ass out though and that's and, and that's for real now that's how you clear a bitch Anyway, y'all get down in the comments. Tell me what you think. I see the tide turning with Nick. Everybody liking him. I think he's fresh. I think he is a fresh, a breath, a breath of fresh air. I think he's funny. I think he's attractive. I think he's smart. All of the things. But I also need, know that Nick is sneaky. I also know that Nick ain't shit right now. He a dog ass nigga right now. And he on some dog ass nigga shit right now. Okay? And and that's it. That's all. But anyway, y'all get down in the comments. Tell me what y'all think about the episode, child. See y'all later. Uh, get down in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. 